be here at Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church. It, it's good to know that God gave us another day that God continues to love us and take care of us. And it's just uh, another marvelous day. The title of the sermon today is going to be The Resurrection. Fact or Fiction. The Resurrection. Fact or Fiction. We know at the church that we believe that it's fact. And the Bible pretty much lays out that it's fact. But I've had a lot of people that's told me that they just couldn't believe that anybody could be raised from the dead. But I want you to know that there was a guy raised from dead right over in Gadsden, Alabama, that I was in the church there, uh, Revival Tabernacle. So I know that God can do it. I'm convinced, and I thank God for the opportunity to have this service today because God's been dealing with me on this to try to show the people. So I want to welcome all of you here at Natchez Creek United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome all the people that are out on Facebook. We have a, a bunch of people that uh, follow us. Skylar, if you put it up there, thank you. Uh, we have a lot of people that follow us up on Facebook, and there's a lot of people that continue to uh, tell us that they like the services that we're having, and uh, there's a lot more out there uh, watching us uh, than uh, in the church a lot of times, and we thank God that we're reaching people not only inside the walls, but outside the walls as well. We're just extremely blessed. Scholar, if you will, just go ahead and let's have a movie back there. Chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow, and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. 
Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Hallelujah. Word of God for the people of God. They said his disciples came by night and stole his body away. He didn't really rise from the dead, according to some people. But we know that the Bible says that he did. And the Bible is God's living word to us and you have to either have faith to believe that it is God's word or if you don't then it's going to be hard for you to be a child of the living God because the Bible says that God did not give us the spirit of fear but of faith for us to trust in him. There was a student that came from Japan that said that he did not believe anything about the resurrection because it was impossible for a person to be raised from the dead. But I want you to know that this is the keystone of the ark of Christianity Amen. the resurrection it's one thing to die there's a lot of gods that are out there who have died there's Mohammed and uh, Buddha and and they just that go on and on of all of these people that they call uh, gods that from different religions that have died. What makes ours distinct is the fact that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead on the third day. This discussion of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has gone on for years and it's happened in churches, it's happened in bars, it's happened all over the place where people are trying to understand what's going on and what God is intending to happen in this world. Christianity, Christ's message to his people, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, establishing Establishing it is essential to the deity of Jesus Christ. Jesus was begotten of the Holy Spirit, of, born of a virgin. What a miracle thing had taken place here. But that doesn't establish the fact of his deity. The resurrection is what determines our Christianity faith to grow and trust and live in God. In Luke 3.38, it discloses the generations of the Son of God. So and so had so and so and so and so had so and so and it went on and it was from Seth the son of Adam, and it kept going and going until finally there was a virgin birth that took place and Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived and had a child and his name was Jesus. But there's other people in the Bible who have had miracles. Moses had miracles. 
Elijah had miracles. Elisha had miracles. Different ones had God with them and had the power of God in their life and as they walked here on this earth. The favor of God was upon them. But that did not establish their deity. There's geniuses, smart people that's all over the place. Shakespeare, Milton, Homer. They were had degrees to that was just untold. They're smart. But that did not establish them at, in their deity. But there must be a chain of evidence that determines a chain, a link that must be from the supernatural, the superhuman, the center of all that shows the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In verse 13 through 19, he tells us three things. One, that Christ did or was raised from the dead. If he wasn't, our faith is in vain. If he wasn't, we were yet in our sins. If he wasn't, the whole plan of salvation collapses because Jesus is not alive. It's like someone who throws you a rope from a boat while you're out in the middle of the water and you think you're drowning and all of a sudden you catch hold of the rope only to find that there's nothing holding the other end. Is a dead savior any use to anyone? Could a dead Christ save anybody? Could a dead Christ conquer sin in the grave? There's all kind of people who think they know the answer to these things. But the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ did die. That he was crucified. And on the third day, he arose from the dead. Amen. If he didn't, he, he's not our Savior, and we're bearing false witness, and right. we're talking about things that doesn't have anything to do with anything. But I want you to know that when Peter got up and preached on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were in the upper room in one accord, gathered together 120 to receive the power that God promised to send. And as the Holy Ghost fell upon each one and the Spirit gave them utterance, they spoke in tongues. Because there in the city, men from everywhere, they couldn't understand what was happening up there. But Peter stood up in the midst of the crowd and spoke in a voice that was clear and loud. He said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days my spirit I'll pour. Amen. Not only for me, but also for you and every child of God who wants to pray through. Hallelujah. I've got it. Thank you, Jesus. He was buried, but he was buried a rich man's burial. Joseph and Nicodemus went to get him, and they buried him in Joseph's grave. It was a glorious funeral. It was a funeral of a rich man. None of the Disciples would have been able to pay for the burial. But these people went and got Jesus and saw to it that he was buried like a rich man. There's power in that gospel message that tells us all of these things. And there were men that afterwards that saw Jesus. 
Simon Peter, Paul, Timothy, Titus, Augustus, and it goes on and on and on of the people. Did you know that Jesus came back and he stayed with the disciples some 40 days? There was witnesses that seen him. The disciples were some of the ones that doubted it the most. After all, they had walked with Jesus. They had talked with Jesus. They had seen miracles of Jesus. And they had seen him die. I remember one story where Peter was out fishing. And he couldn't catch any fish. And Peter was a fisherman. And Jesus told him, throw your net out on the other side. Push out to the deep. And when he did what Jesus said, he had a boat loaded, trying to sink it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, Socrates died from drinking hemlock. And he was killed with a dagger on the uh, Senate floor of the Roman Forum. Jesus was crucified on the cross. But they all died. Socrates, Caesar, Jesus, they all died. And if you leave it there, you think, well, what happened after that? The other two stayed dead. But Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. And he told his disciples, he says, I, I am going to prepare a place for you. That should be an encouraging word to every Christian that's here today. In the 21st and the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation, John describes a beautiful heaven. Amen. A heaven that we all, if we trust in God, if we've been born again, if we're a child of the living God, we'll see one day. He's not still in the grave. There was a little boy and he was dying. And he never had uh, much of a childhood and he had spinal meningitis and he was dying and the dead, he told his dad, he said, Dad, it, it's getting dark in here. And his dad said, yes, it is, son. He said, I ought to get ready for bed. And so he began to dress himself for bed. He said, good night, Dad, but I'll see you in the morning. And the dad said, good night, I'll see you in the morning, son. But there was not a morning for the child. The man put his hands over his knees and he said to the preacher, I am living for the day. I am living for the hour when I will see my son again in heaven. But there is no morning if Jesus did work, wasn't raised from the dead. It's the keystone, the catalyst. It's everything to the Christian belief that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. I want you to know that the people that were there that said that his body was stolen away as they were at the graveside of Jesus, they said they were asleep and the disciples came and stole Jesus' body away. They slept through an earthquake. 
they slipped through the stone being dismantled and moved, rolled away from the entrance. They slipped through all of these things. How could they? I can't sleep at night sometimes because my refrigerator cries out. I can't sleep sometimes because the phone hollers and tells me, I'm dying, save me. I know that y'all probably don't have to deal with those type things, but God wants you to know that Jesus Christ has risen from the grave. He has ascended unto heaven. He sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he ever maketh intercession for you and for me. Hallelujah. You look at these things and you understand how God uses different things to encourage us and give us strength. Did you know Mohammed that when he died that Mark stood up in front of the tent and told the people that he would behead anybody that did not honor Mohammed because he was a god to those people. But it was the exact opposite for Jesus. His disciples saw him die and they ran for cover. Peter said, I go fishing. I'm going back to what I know. I walked with Jesus for a while, but he's gone now. But when the two women went to the graveside, they went to embalm him. They went to prepare him. They they went because they knew that he was dead. But when they got there, there was an angel sitting up on the stone and said, who are you looking for? I know you seek Jesus, but he's not here right now. (laughs) He's not here right now. They came to embalm him, but he wasn't there. And the angel said to the women, Don't you remember that he said, After three days, I will rise again. After three days, I will rise again. John said, He is dead. I saw him die. I saw the blood. I saw the water gush out of his side. I saw his eyes glazed over. I seen him die. I know that he's dead. And that was echoed through the land. When Jesus came back, he walked through the wall. And he was there with the disciples. And Thomas said, you know, I don't believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead. I don't believe that he could do that. And if he is, I got to touch where the nails prints were in his hand and feel inside where the spear has thrust on the inside of Jesus. When Jesus came through the wall, he went to Thomas And he said, Thomas, touch here. Thomas, touch my side. And when Thomas did, Thomas realized who he was. And Jesus said, because of your faith, Thomas, but how much greater is someone who hasn't touched and still believed. Jesus said, have you anything to eat? And he ate broiled fish with them and honeycomb. That same Jesus spent time with them. He loved them. 
And the angel, if you notice in the scripture there, there's one place where the angel called Jesus Lord. He said, come see the place where the Lord lays. All through the other verses there, he called him Jesus. Jesus came and spoke to the disciples. He ate with the disciples. And he continued to be with the disciples 40 days. And then what happened to him? The Bible said the disciples were with him when he ascended unto heaven. They saw him raised up to heaven. Paul said, I have seen Jesus. Paul, who wrote three-fourths of the New Testament, I can't say that I have seen Jesus. I can say that I've seen him in the lives of some of the people. I can say that I've heard his small, still voice on the inside of me. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I have been saved by the power of God. I know that my sins have been blotted out by the blood of Jesus Christ. For without the shedding of the blood, there is no uh, doing away with sin. So you have to have the blood shed. You have to know who you are in Christ. It all boils down to this. Either you believe the Bible says if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord, you will be saved. Amen. If you have done that, then you're a child of the living God. And if you haven't done that, it would behoove you to do that. You need to know that Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. His body is his body, the miracle conversation that he had with his disciples, the, the last time that he showed himself, the way that he shows himself to you, the, the Christian people, the way that you change your life. Did you know that your life has been changed when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Can you see a difference in who you were to who you are now? When Paul saw Jesus and he began to tell people, I've seen Jesus, they said he was crazy. And I want you to know today that somebody out there thinks I'm crazy. It might be you. But I, I'm going to be like Paul and I'm going to tell you that I'm in my right mind. Glory be to God. I had not seen Jesus face to face, but Paul said he did. Paul, who wrote three-fourths of the New Testament, he was there. His body was taken up in the clouds. Glory be to God. He's our faith. He's our Messiah. He lives and because he lives, you live, glory Amen. be to God. Because he lives, I live, glory be to God. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, and he lives forevermore with the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you for the forgiveness of sin, glory be to God. Because Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah.